What up, gamers? We are back with some more modern action here. This time, Demir Merktide versus El Drazi Ram. We've got a lot of Merktide planned up for the next couple of videos. We've also got some affinity, some hardened scales, so lots of cool stuff in the works. There's uh, some amulet titan. We've got some more of the mono blue adventures in the uh, goblin char belter so we got some cool stuff going uh, but let's get into the ramp version of things here there's a couple variations of the you know eldrazi decks running around one of which here is this eldrazi ramp we're seeing the devour of destinies starting off to allow us to do some uh scrying and things like that so we are getting uh the initial sets up here like i would say that the uh eldrazi decks are more or less finding their footing of, hey, here are the best versions of it uh, to be able to go for and giving that flexibility for players to kind of determine uh, which version they feel like is the best. You know, we've got, of course, our Ugin uh, land coming out here, being able to imprint stuff, getting us access to a thought, not Seer there on turn two. What is this? Uh, back in Eldrazi Winter Days. Now, the deck isn't as, as strong as it was back then because there's a lot more tools and, and ways to kind of fight against the deck, and it's not as consistently hitting a, a thought, not Seer on turn two, but it's still possible with this type of, of land base. So if you miss that old school style, you can kind of run this way of going about the Eldrazi deck. Uh, some lists do run the thought, not Seer. Some don't. Early threats can be, be important with the deck. So we'll see how the Merc type player, of course, very cantrip oriented, especially pre sideboard on how they want to kind of, you know, set things up here. So we'll see how they're going to be responding to <laughs> two thought not seers. Let's strip away another card. So you look through here and you're like, yeah, the, the fetch land is annoying, but really disrupting getting rid of that uh, Harbinger of the Seas. And that's the other cool thing is Harbinger of the Seas is popping up a lot more at our shop because we have decks like the Eldrazi Ramp and stuff like that. So we're starting to see some very specific meta choices that are a little bit different than maybe the overall meta. So your shop might look a little bit different than ours. That also has a big impact on main board cards, sideboard cards, things like that, and the way that people interact and design their decks when they're playing at local events compared to playing at a larger event there. But that's going to just quick scoop up. Hey, Eldrazi Ramp, able to just get there with the... Uh, uh, the thought not seers there. So now we can kind of dig into the sideboard, which allows us a little bit more tools and options as the Merktide player. So we'll see how we're going into things here. We already see one sideboard card sitting in hand. Is that consigned to memory? And that is one of those, like, as long as the one ring still exists, consigned to memory is going to be an MVP card to be used so it's it's this weird kind of window of like probably the two most played cards are the one ring and consigned to memory right now i would say and even decks like hardened scales are now no longer just pure green they are blue green to get access to consigned to memory which is crazy that you know, I, I've always liked to harpen back to these old days of modern when, you know, Kanza Tarkir came out and burn players were splashing blue just for, you know, treasure crews. It's like we start to see these weird, like, shifts in traditional decks into these kind of new age hybrid stuff just to adapt to the meta and stuff. And part of that's cool, but I still am still going to continue to promote it every week. We want to see the one ring limited to one in modern. Don't ban it. Just put it to one, right? That way it's there's actual downside. The card's good, but it's not going to be oppressive when there's only one around. But we're already starting with the cantrips. Preordain, the card that essentially soft banned Serum Visions, which used to be the best cantrip. Well, not intentionally being the best cantrip, but really the, the ability to scry and draw is is so important for blue decks and being able to do it in the correct order matters a lot drawing a card then scry two is very different from the serum visions compared to this scry two then draw you, you know setting yourself up makes a big difference here so doing a little bit of setup with our fetching our surveil lands uh, we're building up and setting ourselves up for a turn three tron adventure here all right we got the tower we've got the mine 
do you guys feel about your Tron lands? Do you pick one art and go for that? Do you go for all the different art? Like, where where do you go with your Tron land? I personally go for all the different art, and I go for um, the you know white border as well. I, I'm very particular about almost like trolling my opponents of having mix, mix match cards, specific art. Sometimes I'm like, you know what? I, I'm, I'll, in it, I'll be in it, and I'll just try to match certain arts. And sometimes I'm just like, yeah, but what if I have one random foil and I have two different art white borders and, and like, you know, try to try to uh, mess with my opponent a bit. But also I just love seeing so much different magic art. So that's partly why I lean towards the trolley side of it, of being like, I want to just see all the different cool stuff that I can do. So, ooh, there's a nice use of the consigned memory. Let's just counter that uh, right out. And that's really nice to see. And we'll pop the map as well. So we're getting lots of lands set up here, I'm trying to get into a threat, uh, get a basic forest. Which, you know, there must be access to some sort of green power that, of course, that ramp side of thing that we want to be going for. Frog's going to swing its way on over, start the little poke damage. But the real value of the psychic frog is that additional damage that we get allows us to draw in cards. So... Let's set it up here with a fetch. Shocking? No, basic. Let's go for the basic. And there's a nice little Merc Tide. So now we have the big threat, right? The frog is just kind of value engine. Could become a big threat later, but the synergy between the two is really why this deck works out so well. Now, this is going to be the traditional Demir Merc Tide. It is not the New Age Oculus. Let's manifest. Let's do some reanimation style. It's just like, hey, I'm I'm the traditional Merc Tide list. So, you know, pre-Modern Horizons 3, the Murktide list was a blue-red version, and then it has adapted and, and changed and shifted into this blue-black version, specifically to combine the powers of the frog. So let's see how our Eldrazi ramp player responds to it. They're going to attempt to do a Thought Not Seer, and that's going to be hit with a counterspell. You know, you want to be able to strip away a card, but you also want to be able to uh, set yourself up nicely with a a threat, uh, and at least at least a body out there. And, that is one way to do it. The sewing micro spawn is going to be coming out, allow us to ramp up a little bit more. We're not going to be kicking it, and we can follow it up with a Trinisphere, which is really nice. You know, the ordering of things, maybe you could have done it a little differently. Attempt to do the, the micro spawn first, maybe bait out the counter spell, then hit it with the thought seize or the thought not seer. But really, your goal is to try to get information, see what they have. If they counter the thought not seer, you get up with basically two other cards, right? So you get to go, okay, here we can land. The micro spawn, we could be able to get our Trinisphere follow up. So, like the lines here, you know, are back and forth debate about which one you feel like is a good one to go for. We're not going to go for any uh, blocks here. It looks like just take the uh, the damage off of both. Trinisphere is nice. Anything that costs less than three costs three. Which with a deck full of cantrips, that's a nice little way to kind of mess with your opponent. <laughs> and we're going to just kind of send a message here. I, you know, there's enough stuff in the graveyard we don't have access to, but this is kind of like the way of kind of trying to say, hey, I'm I'm going to try to deal with this. I've got a follow up one ring that we're going to attempt. It's going to be met with another counter spell there. And looking at the hand, looking at what's on board, we know that not much we can do there. So we're going to kind of scoop it up there so it's all tied up one one here in this best of three action so we're going to be going back in looks like maybe double check and confirming some sideboard stuff as we get ready for game number three here so yeah that game game one and two were both set up of hey we get this early lead let's get out going with the thought not seers and end the game that one let's kind of disrupt a little bit here stop any early lead the eldrazi player is trying to go for and then we're going to be able to kind of slam it down with a powerful merc titan frog combo to close out the game there all right how many people are on the uh no play mat mindset i have way too many play mats and i always carry extras with me just so i can be like hey you please use a play mat <laughs> i i I think I'm more bothered by no play mat than I am about like no sleeves at a draft. Some people get really weird about like you draft or do stuff and, and you play sealed or something and you don't have sleeves. And I'm just like, ah, whatever. But like the no 
playmat messes with me. Oh, break the ice. Another great cyborg card will be met with a response. We're going to pop that little map and go get a land. We could have been set up for a turn three Tron set up here, but the break the ice sideboard effect works out well. A lot of the Merc type players uh, in the kind of normal bigger overarching meta might not be running very many of the break the ice but specifically with our shop we have a lot of you know tron or eldrazi based decks we've got a lot of amulet titan so like having access to break the ice is can be pretty beneficial here especially if you're like well my opponent is trying to play this land that makes it so i can't counter stuff hey yeah but it also taps for a colorless mana so i can be able to hit it with that break the ice all right, two power plants over here and a tower. I don't know which land that he went and tutored up for. Maybe it was a power plant. Now you're kind of like, dang it, why? Oh, okay, four mana. Let's try to land a Karn, which that'll be hit with a counter spell. And that's a lot of what this matchup is. You're basically in this kind of, okay, what can I get to resolve? Can I fight through the hate? All right, it, and even like more so when you fight against like a Jeskai control list, if it's like there's so much there. But there's a Chalice here, so here's our first little misplay mistake that happens. Chalice of the Voids converted mana cost. He's casting it for four mana, right, to make sure that it costs anything that costs two or less. Or sorry, anything that costs two gets countered. We do the spell snare there, which actually does not work. Because he says, I'm going to be doing it for two, but paying four mana. So that was the confusion, I think, between the two players. Just the quick, hey, I've been being hit with so many counter spells, not even taking a moment to kind of reassess and evaluate that, oh, that doesn't work. I can't I can't actually counter spell that. But I did want to bring that up for anybody that's watching at home. If it was sitting here and trying to put two mana into it, where X right is equal to two mana, you could be able to hit it with the spell snare. But because X was equal to you're doing four mana for it, two and two, just to make sure it like so it doesn't work. But there's a consign to memory. There probably was a consign to memory when we attempted to do that, so it's all fine. But here we do. We finally get the fetch land. Basically stuck on the kind of land go for the Eldrazi player. They're trying to play a land. They're trying to play a thing. It's immediately countered. They try to play a land. They try to play a thing. Gets countered. Where a Merc type player is just saying go with a handful of, of counter spells until they've land their Harbinger of Seas here. Now, how much mana we got? One, two, three, four, five, six. Six mana. So that's still a lot. You don't have access to Colorless. So that means, like, the Thought Not Seers are not able to get played anymore. So you're kind of in this weird spot. Hey, let's jam a second one just in case something crazy comes up like it all is dust or something like that which could be really bad all right so they're confirming yeah don't worry shock lands are no longer shock lands it's just like a blood moon type effect here uh, non-basic lands are islands so we aren't losing life in that regard there so you know but having two is important no real follow-up there so we do have the double harbinger beat down going and, and like we said, our shop is experiencing a flood of these merfolks here. And a lot of players are still trying to adapt and adjust their play style to dealing with this. Like before, it's like, oh, okay, cool. You know, Blood Moon is annoying and stuff. We've we've dealt with periods where Blood Moon has been really strong at the shop. Here's the attempt for all his dust, which is going to be met with that force of negation, exiling that so we can't deal with that. And it's like, okay, another attempt to try to land a threat or do something to reset immediately met with another counter spell just kind of that big old nope sign popping up here Ooh, access to colorless mana here with a talisman that is the green black one there and that one is a legal target to get hit with the spell snare so that does uh, matter there so again getting rid of that colorless mana does uh, kind of hurt preordain though let's kind of set up and you can see our merc type player kind of moving a little bit faster here to, you know Feeling very comfortable with the closing things out. They're like, cool, let's kind of just keep going. I've gotten you to six. I've got me, myself set up very nicely here that I can kind of put this pressure on and really, you know, try to close this game out in, in very strong fashion. We've got Counterspell back up here. So, like, any sort of thing that tries to get dropped down is not going to work out the way that our Eldrazi player wants. Hey, can we get this one ring? There's four mana. There's a counterspell. 
And there's the handshake. So we're going to just kind of wrap it all up there uh, with that last little bit. Harbinger of the Seas putting in work. You know, I definitely have to readjust and, and do some tweaking to what I'm running right now to kind of deal with the Harbinger. Uh, it's it's putting in a lot of work right now at, at our shop. Uh, but look at all these. Here's, like, the big thing. We get to see some sideboard cards right here. Six total being able to come in to deal with the Eldrazi ramp player. Uh, oh, sorry. Eight total to bring in to deal with this Eldrazi deck. And and that's the kind of power right now of the Merktide list is that flexibility, the changes that they can do to bring in and adapt to so many different matchups, especially post-board there. But very exciting stuff. Of course, we do have more games coming up every Monday and Thursday. So thanks so much for everybody tuning in and watching. I hope you guys are enjoying all this content. We're getting closer to that 1K mark. So make sure you subscribe if you like the content. But that's going to do it for us. Thanks so much for tuning in and watching, everybody. And I'll see you guys next game.